it's a broadie. It's not really, it's a wee bit dreech. But anyway, welcome to another bra blog with me, Rev Lindy, your friendly interfaith minister. And I wonder if you can guess where I am today. I will, uh, shall I give you a wee clue? Right, here we go. When Chapman Billy's leave the street and Druthy neighbours, neighbours meet. As market days are wearing late and folk begin to tack the gate. While we sit boozing on the nappy and getting foo and uncle happy, we think nay on the lang Scot smiles, the mosses water slaps and styles that lie between us and our hame, war sits our sulky sullen dame, gathering her brows like gathering storm, nursing her wrath to keep it warm. That's right, we are down in Alloway because that's the opening verse of the poem Tam Shanta, written by our very own Rabbi Burns and it's Rabbi Burns' day tomorrow. Uh, this is actually the 24th, it's his birthday tomorrow and so I thought I would come down because actually tomorrow on Burns' day I am doing a vow renewal up at Athol Palace. It's a Burns supper themed vow renewal which is just fabulous. For Mark and Nancy. So I thought today I'd come down because this is one of my favourite places in Scotland. It was certainly one of my favourite places growing up because that poem Tam is set right here at that bridge you see behind me. It's called Brigadoon or Bridge Over the River Doon. And the story of Tam is one of um, a guy called Tam who was always in the pub, always in the pub drunk while his wife Kate was sitting at home getting more and more annoyed, gathering her brows like gathering storm, nursing her wrath to keep it warm. And um, the story tells of how one night Tam left the pub jumped on his horse Meg and um, headed home but on the way home he was passing Alloway Old Haunted Kirk up the road there when he came across a coven of witches who were all doing what witches do singing and dancing and um, casting spells in the graveyard and he was so mesmerised watching them because they were in various states of undress shall we say that um, he got carried away and he shouted out well done Cutty Sark and a Cutty Sark is just a, a thin night dress that ladies wear and um, of course the witches saw him and they took off in hot pursuit Tam and his Meg, um, to his horse Meg headed down here to the bridge to try and get onto the bridge because of course witches can't cross water and so he knew if he got onto the bridge he would be safe. The witches were chasing him like um, like crazy things because they were witches of course and um, if you haven't seen the poem, if you haven't looked at the poem please do because it's an absolute masterpiece. It's about 20 very long verses long but it tells this beautiful story and um, or this really really fascinating story. But um, just as he gets to the brig, uh, Meg the horse takes a leap onto the bridge as one of the witches jumps forward and grabs Meg's tail. Meg manages to go onto the bridge and um, the, the witch is left holding poor Meg's tail. But it means Tam uh, manages to make his escape and live to drink another day. And um, when I was a wee girl, I'm going to walk back up here so that I can actually show you the bridge itself because it's a, an old cobbled bridge and it's really, really lovely. And when I was a wee girl, uh, because I was born just a couple of miles along the road there, and so my dad would bring us here, there was five of us, he would bring us here to this old brig and uh, we would sit down and he would tell us the story of Tamashanta and then and he would always say it was haunted, that it was haunted by Tam and his horse Meg and so um, he would tell us to, to shut our eyes and listen to see if we could hear Meg's hoofs as she made her escape over the bridge and I always, I swear I always thought, I, well believed that I could hear those hoofs and um, it's just such a beautiful sport, such, just such a a very peaceful, quiet sport. But I love the idea, not only that these uh, sort of mythical characters 
were, were based here, but also Rabbi Burns himself would have come over this brig to get, because his house is just up there on the left, and um, that at one point, my story ran out. Um, so yeah, I love the idea that Rabbi Burns himself used to cross this bridge and, it, and at one point he's had this idea for this epic poem, Tamashanta. But of course this blog is not just about um, these beautiful Scottish spots, it's also about ceremony and about ritual. And if you look behind me there, wait till we see if you can see it, there's the River Doon. And um, there is one of the most popular and romantic wedding venues in the whole of Ayrshire. That is the Brigadoon Hotel. I've never conducted a wedding there. I've got about 70 on the books and not one of them is for here. So come on, peeps. But, um, but I've been to a couple of weddings in there and it's a beautiful venue. Look at those gardens. And um, not least because it has a view right onto this old brig and down to the river and following the ceremony usually the the wedding party comes out here into the gardens to get their photographs taken and the wedding couple comes up here onto the bridge to get their um, photographs taken with a spirit of Rabbi Burns and, and Tamashanter all around them. You know that, that scene in Star Wars where Luke Skywalker looks up and there are the, the spirits of Obi-Wan Kenobi, Yoda and, um, and Darth Vader? Well, it's a bit like that here. Instead of those three, you've got Tamashanter, Meg the Horse and our very own Rabbi Burns. That's what I like to think. It is, a, as I say, a very spiritual place. When I was a wee girl, as I said, my dad used to take us out and about and we would go to all the different spots where Rabbi was supposed to have uh, visited and been in those trees. You know, we we gates around them where he used to meet his girlfriends because they had a lot of girlfriends. He was a bit of a, a bit of a Mr. Lover Lover. And um, and so there's all these really nice spots, but they have a, a real energy to them. And um, and the Brigadoon is one of those places that has a real beautiful energy to it. Uh, so if you ever get the chance, if you're ever down here in Ayrshire and you get the chance to come and visit this old brig, please do and uh, don't forget to close your eyes and see if you can hear Meg's hoofs as she makes her escape from the witches. Okay, let's go up and have a look at Rabbi Burns' house. It's just up the road on the left there. It's the same wee thatch cottage he was born in and, um, and you can go in and have a look. So let's do that. Okay, bye. Look, here I am in the Brigadoon Hotel. They very kindly said I could pop in and see the ceremony room. It's set up for a Burns supper for, well, either tonight or tomorrow night for Burns Night, but I just wanted to let you see it as a venue because it's got this huge sweeping staircase so the bride and groom come down here, all their guests will be seated down the stair and they'll make their entrance down this big stair here, but up at the end there you can see the big windows, that's what looks up onto the Brigadoon where Tamashanta made his escape, so and look at the, the ceiling. So a really beautiful venue for anybody thinking about having their wedding or any type of ceremony. It lends itself, well, you can see it's set up for a burn supper. So it lends itself to any type of ceremony. The whole hotel is full of pictures of Abbey and, um, and we lines from his poetry everywhere. So it's really beautiful. So if you are looking for a, a wedding in Ayrshire, then this is a venue that's well worth a look and one close to my heart. Right, I'm going to go and have a wee cup of coffee in the coffee lounge and then we'll head up to Rabbi's house. So you can see behind me here, this is Burns's cottage in Allaby. That's the wee house where Rabbi Burns himself was born in 1759. It's still here. It's, um, it's looked after by the National Trust for Scotland, you can go in and have a look around, which we'll do in a wee minute. And there's a whole big museum that's been built just over the back there. So, well worth a visit. Um, as I say, he was born here, grew up as a wee boy here, then sort of moved around a bit. But his dad was a farmer, 
he became a farmer, he also collected taxes for a while, but he wasn't an uneducated man because although this is the only cottage that's, you know, that still exists, uh, in its time there would have been a whole row of cottages here and so uh, Robert Burns's father and some of the other local villagers all got together and they hired a tutor to come and coach the children including Robert. So he grew up to, to have a good education and I think you can, um, you can see that throughout all his poetry. So beautiful old cottage look, still got the thatched roof there but um and we'll go in and have a wee look round and see what it must have been like for a young rabbi to live there come on so i'm just about to go into burnsy's cottage i've just found out that you can actually hire that out for weddings which is um which is awesome I, mean, I don't think you'll get four or five hundred people in there like you would Stirling Castle of course but if you just had a small group of people that would be quite an amazing venue and they've got uh, a big function hall here it's called the Red Room which means if you were wed having your wedding here it would be the Red Wedding if you're a Game of Thrones fan you'll get that reference maybe not a good thing but um, yeah so let's go into to the cottage as I said earlier Rabbi Burns's dad built this. It's actually quite a big cottage. It's much bigger than what I remember. As I say, I haven't been here since I was a girl. But um, it is actually quite a big cottage. But remember, some of the, fa the animals would also have shared this cottage with the family. So, um, so it wouldn't it all have been theirs. So I think this was actually the buyer. The guy told me, look at those walls. I don't know if, can you see the walls? Can you see these big stone walls? Look how thick they are. That's absolutely amazing. And it's got lines from, uh, from Burns's poetry on all the walls. So, oh, right, well, maybe this was the buyer. Because look at this. So imagine sharing your house with your cows and your pigs and your horses. I think the guy at the, the ticket office was saying to me, although uh, Robert Burns' dad aspired to be a farmer and he couldn't quite make it, times were just too tough then. Oh, what am I doing? I can't even see the the door came through. So this would have been this would have been their wee their wee lounge, which well actually it's not that wee. Considering I mean he wasn't poor. Robert Burns' dad. And I don't know if you know but originally their name was Burness. B U R N E W -S, S. And um and Robert Burns changed I think it was Rabbi himself changed it to, to Burns. So that's their wee, their wee lounge. You can see the fire behind me there. I think it would have been quite a warm wee room, what with the thick walls for insulation and the animals staying next door and then the fire on. It would have been a toasty wee room. Right, let's go through and see the kitchen. The kitchen and the bedroom. So there we go. We're into the kitchen, look at the big the fire where all the, the meals would have been cooked. And then the, the larder and all the, the dishes. And then look at this, this would have been their wee beds. Look at this, and you can see up above. So we've got Gilbert Burns, Robert Burns, Annabella Burns, and Agnes Burns. Oh. Can you see that? How beautiful is that? The rabbi buns. The oldest of four. Look at those tiny wee beds. I don't know if you can see, but it's about half the, half the length of me. don't know that they'd have been that comfy and they, they would all have probably been in the one bed. 
the cottage is still in really, really good condition. Of course, it's been refurbished over the years, but they've done a really good job of it. And there's a big stool, a wee stool here. Can you see it there? And it says, the mother with her needle in her shears, gars old, clays look amazed as wheels the new. So a mum with her needle and her scissors takes old clothes and makes them look almost new. Well, that has been our visit here to Rabbi Burns Cottage in Allery. I hope you've enjoyed it and um, I hope you will go and look up some of Rabbi Burns' poetry. He really was a genius when it comes to poetry because you know, lots of poets, they find or there's a certain genre that comes naturally to them and they just stick with that. But Rabbi Burns wrote poems about nature, you know, Scottish uh, landscapes, you know, ye banks and braes of Bonnie Doon or Sweet Afton. He wrote poetry about politics. He wrote some, uh, he wrote poetry about love and relationships, of course that's probably what he's best known for. And then he wrote these epic poems, these blockbusters like Tam O'Shanta. But, uh, and of course, the one that is known all over the world, Old Lang Syne. Should all acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind, should all acquaintance be forgot for the sake of old Lang Syne. In other words, should all old grudges and old hurts just be forgotten as we move forward into the next year. He was a genius. I love Rabbi Burns. I loved him growing up. I still love him. And um, and I love this place that was his home. So thanks for jo joining on this um, second Bra blog. Who knows where we'll be next week, but it's been Bra. Bye.